As the bloodline is fighting, Roman Reigns' music hits, and Michael Cole says, Daddy's here. Is there a way for Michael Cole to be arrested for impersonating a wrestling personality on television for the last 25 years? God, if there was, the wrestling world would certainly be better off. Good fucking God, Michael Cole is so bad at his job. I'm John Renton with my review, WWE SmackDown from St. Louis, Missouri. Let me know your thoughts on this show in the comments, please. A couple decent moments and some matches that kind of just existed. And also, they're continuing the brace spoopy stuff. He's having to fight himself. Uncle Howdy! Which is kind of looking like a Barry Windham mask. It's clearly not Barry Windham. It's obviously Bo. Or maybe it's Bray in a scary mask and they're going to try to do some cinematic stuff. I don't know. We'll talk about that in a bit. Um, <clears throat> I don't know why they made that Brawling Brutes' theme a little bit techno-Irish. But nevertheless, it was what it was. They said that Seamus had some kind of uh, head fracture uh, displacement. Well... I mean, I guess his wife certainly was doing something. His newly wed wife, as opposed to his non-newly wed wife. That was a really weird way to say it. He got married recently. Congratulations to him. And to his new wife, I wish him nothing but the best. But he's going to be off for a bit, as he should. The man's been working really hard. He had a potential career-ending injury just a couple years ago. <clears throat> Spinal stenosis, all that. And he's been doing some of his best work. He's in his mid-40s. Good job for him getting married. They seem happy together. So happy together. So Sammy tells Jay to bring the rage. Bring the rage. Bring the fun. Bring the primal rage. Remember primal rage? That was a fun game. Solo and Sammy with the Usos took on Rage and Peter Doon. This was a match. Nothing bad. Nothing special. It just was. <laughs> the crowd loves Sammy. We get more arguing with uh, Sammy and Jay. And that leads to the most devastating maneuver in all professional wrestling surprise roll up. One, two, three. And then we get more arguing. Then Roman shows up and Michael Cole says, Daddy's here. I really want Michael Cole arrested for being a terrible wrestling commentator. Goddamn, Michael Cole. You, you, you ruin every goddamn word every time you say it. So anyway, <coughs> Roman, he wants his meat acknowledged and everybody acknowledges his meat. And then he says, you want to act like kids? Well, we're going <laughs> to we're, we're gonna treat you like kids. Let me get out the Joe Jackson father playbook. That's going to anger people. Better than the Benoit playbook. Nevertheless, Sammy apologizes. I don't know why you're upset at me. It's either genuine or disingenuous, or maybe it's a mixture of both. Barry the Hatchet. They made three Hatchet movies, believe it or not. Has anybody seen any of the Hatchet movies? Horror movie month. Watch some horror movies. You only have a few days left. And he offers a handshake. Jay <coughs> doesn't like anything about Sammy. Doesn't like the shirt. Doesn't like anything about him. And because he's not blood, and Sammy says, <laughs> well, the tribal chief said, I don't care what the tribal chief said. <laughs> it just raises look. I'm not the biggest fan of this story. I feel that it's, that sometimes it's a little Sammy or Sammy, as it were. There have been moments that have actually been pretty good, and this is one of the moments where they hit. <laughs> just Roman, it's like they played a perfect, like, just SNL sketch or something like that. The Debbie Downer, rrr, rrr. And the crowd's chain, you fucked up. It was on FS1, by the way. So the ratings will probably be lower because FS1 is a substation. But nevertheless, and soon maybe they'll get back to regular Fox, which is the Dom station. So Sammy tries to play Peacekeeper. <laughs> he hasn't been feeling very oozy. <laughs> and every, I think Solo was the only one who was a crack. Haven was starting to crack. Roman. Jay is doing this. It's more of like, don't look at me or I'll laugh more. Don't look at me. God damn it. You're... Jimmy's in the back laughing. And he says, is that your is that your problem? You don't feel very oozy. You need to find your inner oozy. <laughs> and this was rather hilarious. Everybody just, Roman's losing. Jay in particular. And look, it, this has got to be a way for them to rib, to joke around with each other at this point. Where they just... <laughs> They, they are just seeing who can get who to crack. Even Sammy was cracking. Like, and the crowd was laughing, but the crowd was chanting, like, you know, a fine, you know, like something about Usi, Usi, and they were cracking Jay up and says, if you either find your inner Usi and do all this, or Sammy's going to, it's going to be Sammy Uso and Sammy Uso chants. Everybody's still cracking. I think so. They didn't shoot solo as much, but I think he was being pretty stoic, but I imagine that he was probably. <clears throat> this was the highlight of the show. Unfortunately, I'm not going to say it was all downhill from here, 
this was just the highlight of the show. So there you go. I encourage you guys to check out this full segment. It, it It's well worth seeing. So we then get Eric, uh, Eric Ivar and Sarah Race War Row, which I'm going to continue to mention until she apologizes for being a goddamn bigot. But she fits in just fine on Fox. And it's the Viking Race War Raiders. I just, I don't care about this team. They haven't meant anything since they were War Machine. And Sarah Rowe exposed, exposed her whole goddamn, her kid's screwed. That poor kid. That poor child would be better off in an orphanage where it could be, you know, brought in by somebody. Maybe the family that brought in the orphan team, which actually was an orphan child. Actually, an orphan midget. Nevertheless, let's move on from that. So, let's save some time. New Day versus Maximum Male Models of Maxine. Oh, fuck no. Fuck you, fuck whoever thinks that this Maximum Male Models uh, uh, gimmick was a good idea. And creative, I mean. If you guys think it's fine, that's whatever. New Day wins. Liv and Sonya then fist each other backstage. I don't really know where they're going with this. They didn't break any tables or bring any uh, chairs out, so at least they dial back on that. Use it occasionally, and it's fine. Um, Braun pre-tape, showing his strength and how he's going to face Edward James almost soon. Rhonda has an open challenge, and it's Emma, the former Tennille Dashwood. And we are just a day away from... The five-year anniversary of her being fired from WWE and Leo Rush opening his whole goddamn... And it's funny, her return to WWE television <clears throat> coincides... And she's been in Impact Wrestling, she's been doing other stuff. She's dating Madcap Moss and apparently she's, ha she's been having health issues. I don't remember what it is that she has. I don't remember the particular condition that she has, but she sometimes needs to take time away. <clears throat> but she's been doing some good stuff in Impact Wrestling. Now she's back. But... Uh, Leo Rush returned to the New Japan uh, brand at their New Japan Rumble event. Sorry if you haven't seen it. Bit of a spoiler, but honestly, not that many people were talking about it, so I don't know if anybody really cared. I could have watched it, but I wasn't going to pay 25 bucks and another 15 for the event yesterday. Not that I don't wish New Japan well, but nevertheless. Emma faced Ronda Rousey in an open challenge match, and oh dear. Get Ronda Rousey off promos. Get Ronda out of the ring. Pay her to go home. Seriously. Buy her out. Send her home. Just cut her right now. This, this has been a catastrophic disaster. Emma, you get welcome back and you have to carry this sack of shit that doesn't mean anything. That's probably upset about the Alex Jones verdict. Probably because she could be uh, held liable for the Sandy Hook conspiracies that she decided to spout. But nevertheless, uh, Ronda Rousey just... She just laid around like a sack of shit and then eventually beat Emma. Emma tried. My God, did she try. Uh, and they did a referee spot where the referee got out of the way. And Ronda had to cheat with an eye rake and then get an arm bar. And then Bailey and Bianca are going to have a last woman standing match at Crown Jewel. A last woman standing match in front of the Crown Prince. Oh, they're just freaking ribbon on the square at this point. And that's knocking the government, not the people. I do want to say right now, though, in regards to Crown Jewel, I don't know if I'm going to do predictions, but I will do a review, but the review will be up hours later because I will be working, and I'm not taking time off to review that event. <laughs> Usos uh, versus Ridge and Peter Dune was also added to the event. Jay and uh, Heyman are talking. Paul says, let me be the peacekeeper. Then Shayna chokes out Natty after Natty tries to confront Ronda. Um, don't know what Natty did to deserve that, but Shayna trying to, Shayna being the one with the personality, uh, you know, trying to help Rhonda be in, interesting at all. Sign me the fuck up. Top dog looks like Mr. Wrestling. I want Cole to be eviscerated and flogged. How dare you, Michael Cole? Every Mr. Wrestling has ever existed that is dead should rise up from their grave and slap you repeatedly. Like they did in Dark Knight of the Scarecrow. Check out that retro view. Lego Limb Phantasm with Selena took on Hit Row and Nakamura. Look, Nakamura is getting paid big money to basically do nothing. I don't blame him. Selena does not fit in with Lego Land Phantasm, and I'm sorry. B Fab may be one of the most embarrassing wrestlers to watch, and I know that she wasn't like that. She needs more time, but. Looking at her, great, okay, she doesn't even look like she understands how to basically walk upstairs without help. And Top Dollar's terrible. Hit Row's terrible. Absolutely terrible. Top Dollar did a thing where he got up on the ropes. Oh, look, a big guy can do that. And yeah, and Escobar looked like an idiot. 
Having to sit there like, you're gonna do anything, you fucking moron? Triple H needs to pay for his crimes for re-signing some people, like Hit Row and the particular person I'm going to talk about later. Chin Salsa wins it. I don't know who took the pin. I don't care. Heyman then says, hey, uh, my tribal chief, look at uh, Logan Paul working in, uh, under some kind of carnival tent against people. All it takes is one lucky shot. He's had two matches. Heyman tried. I do not care about this Logan Paul Roman Reigns thing. They're trying. God damn it. <laughs> if they do anything to even indicate that Logan Paul can possibly beat Roman Reigns, they are just torpedoing Roman Reigns. LA Knight, uh, he is ready to take over. Ricochet tries to jaw jack with him. That was hilarious. Speaking of which, speaking of hilarious, boy, Kayla tried to be hilarious on Twitter uh, earlier because she took a picture of an Uber driver from the back seat and decided to uh, dox her, as the kids say. Kayla has uh, some funny you know, witty tweets. She also is exposed to the fact that she kind of has brain parasites up there. Like, just just stop doing stupid shit. Report to Uber. Do that. There's nothing wrong with telling people, you know, or telling the company if their employee's bad at their job, but that is just opening somebody to a whole bunch of, like, unnecessary hate when you could have kept it in-house. So, the cunning, Miss Scarlet Cunning, he said cunning, Cross versus Moss. Oh, hell no. This is another uh, duo that Triple H will pay for uh, bringing back. Cross and Scarlet. Cross doesn't look like he's cared one bit about doing anything right since he's come back. And then Scarlet encourages uh, Cross to finger Moss's hole before topping him for three. And then Scarlet gives him a mic. He chokes about with the Cross jacket and is speaking on the mic and doing this. And da la 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 Tick tock. That was the last match, by the way. We, we then got Endless Plugs, Crown Jewel Rundown, Imperium, then attacks Ray backstage and chops him. Um, next week, I'm, I don't know if they're going to tape next week's SmackDown tonight if they're taping it or if they're going to have it because some people aren't going to be on the show for Crown Jewel and they're just going to have, you know, a skeleton crew there. I, I'm not sure. If they are taping SmackDown, don't post the spoilers here. I'll read about them, but I'll still watch the show. And here's Bray. He says, um, there, there's welcome back chance. He says, this uh, is the real version of me, that he will do spectacular things, but he's also done bad things. And then suddenly, with mere seconds left on the FS1 broadcast, they can go a little bit over. There's a guy that appears. Who am I? And it is apparently Uncle Howdy. It's the Barry Windham mask. It's either worn by Bray and he's talking to himself, or it's worn by Bo. Or they managed to prop up Barry Windham, who I don't think is in the best health. There are people that like this Bray stuff. It's the same shit. It, it, he seems genuine and he seems happy to be back, but it's the same spoopy stuff that got played out a while ago. It got played out with Taker. It got played. It just it got played out eventually. Anyway, nevertheless, uh, maybe break and go to Hollywood after this stint, uh, this second stint in WWE. Nevertheless, let me know your thoughts in the comments. Like, share, subscribe. Twitter handle in the description. I'm John Ricklin. I'll see you soon.